Hi everyone, uh, my name is Molly Bendel and I'm a lecturer in studio art and in the IMD program. Uh, and I know that I'm not the first artist to explore longing and visibility in my work. Um, uh, in fact, I think all artists and probably all academics too have a very strong experience with these feelings. Um, that said, um, ephemeral media, and you know, more specifically for the purposes of my talk today, immersive media have allowed me a sort of unique methodology and tool set for tackling these concepts. Um, you know, as as someone from a sculptural background, a, a practice that was heavily invested in physicality and in the material. Uh, working with immersive media, especially VR technology, was was really a conscious choice on my part to to play with and expose these kinds of liminal interior spaces of thought. Um, so I wanted to show two pieces today that, to me, demanded to be made using this medium. Um, so the first piece I'm talking about is also my first experience building something with an immersive media workflow. Uh, it's called Wander Wonder, and Wander Wonder is a piece that uses both VR and large scale immersive projection to display two separate but connected experiences. So Wander on the left um, is a virtual street map of Baltimore City with all the buildings removed except for the Psychic Reader storefronts. Um, and Wonder on the right is a zero gravity digital astral plane experienced as a virtual reality environment. And the way that it works is that an interactant sort of flies through the Wonder side via a VR headset. Um, and the wander side, the psychic storefront side, is projected on the screen for spectators to view. So one way to think about this is, is two video games being played with a single mouse. Um, so the interactant uses this uh, custom crystal ball controller to navigate both environments simultaneously. So they, they guide the experiences of the spectators looking at the psychic reader storefronts while they themselves are fully immersed in the VR environment of the wonder side. Um, under the hood, the, the controller works essentially the same way as a rollerball mouse works. Um, I guess I thought that was pretty slick. Um, so the idea for the wander side came first. Um, I didn't learn to drive until I was 25. Uh, and if you have lived in Baltimore City, and I, I intuit that there's at least one other person here who has, um, you know that that means that I spent a lot of time either walking around or sort of staring at random city blocks while I was waiting for the bus. Um, and something that always sort of bugged me were the psychic readers. like. Why were they always open when I never saw anyone go in or out? Um, how did they pay rent? And I just sort of started to toy with a version of Baltimore where um, the city itself had disappeared and only um, the streets and the psychics remained. Um, and when I started reading more about predictive algorithms that anticipate the future actions of a user for all kinds of, um, in my mind, kind of often unsavory purposes, my, my obsession with psychic readers grew and I started learning some of the tech. Like I started learning 3D modeling programs. I started learning re real-time rendering engines, um, specifically uh, Maya and Unity um, to realize the project. Um, but that that empty city was, was a, ultimately a relatively cynical way to frame the idea of psychic powers, you know, and and the longer I worked on it, the more that bothered me. Like I felt like I had ignored the magic, like the appeal and the impulse to the appeal of the impulse to look into the future. Um, so over time, the piece split into two experiences: the experience for the spectator and the experience for the person willing to put aside their physical senses in exchange for the opportunity to look further. Um, 
and as I was as I was researching the piece, you know, I really dug into the trope of the blind oracle and the the relationship between blindness and a VR headset. So through a VR space, um, Wonder offers the opportunity to kind of surrender your physical reality in exchange for an experience beyond reality, you know, like a sort of second sight, right? Um, this slide uh, shows under the hood a little bit the way Wonder is constructed. Um, so it actually starts with with pen and ink drawings on the right, which are sort of foundational to my practice. Like I've all, I've always been a, a constant um, drawer and doodler and and margin scribbler. Um, and so those drawings were sort of isolated. I built three D models using them as in, inspiration, and then I, I scanned them and I applied them to the models that I had made as textures. Um, so. The second piece that I want to talk about is um, a, you know, uh, probably my most recent work. It's a direct response to the pandemic. It's very much a work in progress. Um, so Sketch for Sleepers is an attempt to preserve people through digital masks molded around images from video chats. Um, this piece was begun during quarantine uh, and built sort of around my, my fear that the last time I might see my loved ones might be on a video call. Um, and as part of that panic, I started saving screenshots of all of my Zoom calls. Um, so my, my screenshot folder has ballooned to 1100 files and 1 1.5 gigabytes uh, and uh, working with these images, you know, when I went to actually work with them and try to try to do more with them, um, they they really just started as like these rough, very rough pencil sketches. Um, I'm not quite sure what got me thinking about drawing the Zoom calls. Um, I think it was probably something about the the grainy graininess and the the color co correction algorithms that you see in Zoom that make everything feel often very dramatic and illustrative, um, almost Baroque maybe. Um, and, you know, at the time, April of, of 2020, um, uh, I wrote that the preoccupation may also come from, from some combination of the following. Um, one, your participant watches you take a picture and you in that moment get a picture of yourself taking the picture. Um, and two, that that drawing is excruciating and that that stress keeps me from from thinking about other things. Um, and at the time, I wrote that, um, like a great artist said, I'm not very good at it, but it doesn't matter. Um, and that artist was was Bob Ross, which I think shows the kind of comfort and familiarity that I was I was craving at that time. Shortly after I published the drawings, um, I was contacted by the Baltimore Museum of Art, um, and I was asked if I had any video work for a show called The Necessity of Tomorrow. Um, and that got me thinking about how this giant folder full of screenshots could change into like an immersive reflection of the current moment. Um, a moment that for me could be summed up by feeling um, asleep, uh, underwater and um, under pressure to maintain some sort of control. Um, and so I built this this footage of figures wearing, you know, masks of their faces on of their Zoom personas as these figures um, sleeping peacefully and and in a world that I fully controlled where I knew they were safe. Um, I'm just going to play a couple seconds of that and I'll talk over it in the interest of time. Um, so the, the footage is um, a recording of a simulation built in Unity. And um, basically you can just sort of watch these different figures toss and turn in their, in their sleep. Um, I have it muted because I'm talking over the audio, but I, I generated it from, from recordings of people's breathing while they're sleeping. Um, and uh, even though it started in the spring of 2020, 
I'm still working on it and I'm starting to hope that I might be able to find the end of it. Um, so two pieces, you know, where my work started and, and where it is now. Um, thank you so much for listening. And if you ever want to talk, I would love to hear from you.